Hello, welcome everyone to the Grind Culture Detox podcast. I am super excited to share this particular topic with y'all today with Nakia Dillard, uh, who is the CEO of Magnetic Woman Coaching. And we're going to talk today about workplace boundaries because it's just a long overdue conversation. But before we get into that, I wanted to take a moment to introduce Nakia, who I've known her for a minute. You know, we were just kind of reminiscing on when or like how we met. And it's been some years. And when I really think about folks who are like doing of that daily work of showing up for themselves, self-care, wellness, Nakia is really the first person that comes to mind and has just been a teacher and a supporter and a helper for me. And I just know that other folks could benefit from some of the medicine and the wisdom that she has to share with us. And on that regard, just also wanted to share her bio. So Nakia Dillard is the founder of Magnetic Woman Coaching and Goddess Crowns by Nakia, which is um, sacred handmade jewelry, beautiful cowrie shell and copper jewelry for extra abundance, y'all. So definitely tap in with her. That information will be in the description. Nakia's sole mission is to help Black women honor their self-care and leap into their divine calling so that they can experience more joy, fulfillment, and self-love. Through her magnetic woman coaching, she helps women get clear, increase their confidence, and leap with courage. She provides private coaching, workshops, and facilitates an annual magnetic woman mastermind. Whether rocking their crowns or experiencing Nakia's coaching, women feel like the goddesses that they are. They know that they are cared for and more importantly, that they have the power within themselves to honor themselves, their beauty, self-love and purpose. Nakia Dillard has over 15 years of experience impacting the lives of others through her service in public health, youth development, as well as social and food justice work. She holds a bachelor's of science in community-based health education. She has served as a personal development coach and mentor for both women and girls. And without further ado, I want to introduce y'all to Nakia Dillard. How are you today? <laughs> I am amazing. Thank you so much for having me, uh, Heather. It's been about five years since we've met. Wow. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, and I'm just excited to have this conversation with you um, around workplace wellness and boundary setting and just to be connected, reconnected with you in this, in this light. So thank you for having me. Yes. And thank you for saying yes. And, you know, this podcast is really like, when we think about the grind culture detox, it's not something that's ever really complete. It's a daily decision to decide that another way is possible. And it's hard. (laughs) It's hard. It does require a big part of the grind culture detox is healthy boundaries and being able to assert them and and not being afraid to do so in order to make sure that your physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual needs are met. And so we've all been impacted by grind culture, but the way that it's shown up is a lot different for each person. We all have a unique story. And Nakia, I just wanted to check in with you and see how has grind culture impacted you? Um, and your professional world? Yeah, thank you for that that question. So I've had a long journey of just learning the importance of self-care and building a daily practice of self-care and honoring myself. I was lucky to kind of get introduced to it in my early 20s by some mentors, uh, Black women mentors who pulled me in and I'm getting this information like, wow, this is, I've never even heard of like what these things are. And these conversations haven't been had in my upbringing and just had a long standing and realizing that this was something 
for me to not only do for myself, but also share with others. But initially it was for me. Let me get these practices in. Let me make it a part of who I am. And being in certain work settings and places and going into it with that commitment to honoring my self-care has been a part of me for a while, but it has not been easy. I'm mm-hmm. trying to really uphold it because if you say you're about something, you're going to get opportunities to demonstrate what you're about. And the workplace has definitely been just the energy of grind culture and also moving at the speed of whiteness and mm. where it's like everything is expected to just move, 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 go, 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 and be in this high masculine energy mm. all the time. And mm-hmm. so me being a very feminine flow, kind of like self-care Paul's receive. <laughs> so I'm challenged with that automatically. Mm-hmm. And so I have had to definitely interrupt that. And it hasn't been easy. Just me being someone who has struggled with even speaking my voice forward for certain spaces. And especially when I'm in places where I'm often the only black woman or the mm-hmm. one who's like holding a lot of the foundation of the work and mm. and so challenging that energy in, in those spaces hasn't been easy but it has been a must for me because I found that I can't be my authentic self you know as someone who believes in honoring who I am and taking care of myself and that I don't have to be in this masculated energy. I can't be Nakia if I don't say, hey, this doesn't work. You know, I need to take a break. Calling things out. I'm not going to accept being dumped on. Like, I mean, it's it, it's been a journey. I have mm-hmm. not been, it has not been the easiest thing to do or the regular thing to do, but I've realized that I, I have to, in order to honor how I feel and who I am, wherever I am, it has to also be spoken about in the workplace and to interrupt it. I'm not going to be burnt out and cried out and <laughs> fell out somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for, for this job or, or whatever. Okay. Uh, no, because if I'm if I'm setting the tone for my day, but I'm doing these practices and I teach this, and I go into these settings and I can't be it. Oh. No, <laughs> that don't work. <laughs> That don't work. So y'all either, and I had to decide for myself, do I go into these workplaces and adjust to that culture, the grind culture, the, like I said, the speed of whiteness culture, the masculine culture. Do I decide to jump in gear with them or do I call for, for them to shift their energy? And yes, this is big institutionalized, just, and I'm only me, but no, y'all gonna have to slow it down. And Mm. I'm going to keep on playing those seeds to show you I'm not jumping in that I'm not jumping in that energy so yeah girl (laughs) (laughs) wow I just need to just like can we just all just take a collective breath with that and just really take that medicine in so much was shared and one thing that there's so many things uh, there's so many threads But one thing I really appreciated was the idea of shifting institutional energy. And that's something that I can speak to and I can say, it's not easy. (laughs) It's, it could be very hard, but, and it's possible. Like we are that powerful. There's a book that I was reading that's um, called How to Do Nothing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's really cool. This writer really talks about to in this fast paced world where we're always expected to produce, produce, produce and not stop and um, move at that speed of whiteness. There's ways that you have to really kind of navigate and sneakily navigate sometimes making sure you don't get caught up in that wheel. And uh, she speaks to something called the art of refusal Mm. and just like the power of like saying, actually, no, I'm not doing that. Just seeing the ripple effect that that can have. Sometimes folks are waiting for one person to say no. Cause, and then that gives them the strength. Right. And they see that. And so the art of refusal that goes into the boundaries piece. What are, 
workplace boundaries in your view, Nakia, and why are they important? Well, I think one of the ones you just mentioned is one of the most powerful ones is being able to say no, (laughs) you know, and and it can be really challenging to do that in a workplace where you're expected to kind of just go along with whatever's coming at you, even with uh, holding for me, it's been like, here's the load I'm holding that's already heavy. And then there's mm-hmm. more things that are being dumped on. And for me to build the courage to be able to say, no, I'm not doing that in addition to this is one of the most powerful ones. And also just, so yeah, saying no, definitely taking breaks. These things are simple, but they are, are not being followed enough. Mm. Taking breaks, making sure that you eat and you're hydrated. Because sometimes the grind culture is like, you got to keep going. You got to bring your lunch to the computer and, and eat. Right. And uh-uh. I, close, <laughs> I close the computer screen down and log okay. off during my lunch time. And you know what I'm saying? This is, no, this is my time. Honoring your time and taking those breaks, right? You get paid. Well, oftentimes, you know, those breaks, legally, you're supposed to have them. Legally, so yeah. So take, take advantage of your breaks. You know, make sure you're eating and you're hydrated. Definitely say no if you're in a place where it's overloading you in your capacity. It's leading to a place of burnout, which is all too often. I'm learning to say, no, that's too much. Or it's going to mean that if I do this, then I'm not able to do this other thing. As long as you're clear about that, being able to Mm -hmm. communicate. If you're adding more to my load, this is what it's going to mean. Can we prioritize together? So communicating that piece speaking up, I just made a post the other day around like speaking, speaking your truth does not mean that you're difficult, right? So just that piece around, I've had fears around being labeled the difficult uh, person or black woman, yep. you know, call out something, or if you interrupt something, that, that's been the status quo. So it's, it's like being able to communicate when you know something doesn't feel right, when you know it's going to lead to a, a sense of overwhelm, to no, this ain't this ain't working. Um, so what did I say? I said say, saying no, mm-hmm. taking your breaks, hydrating, honoring yourself, communicating your needs and what's working and what's not gonna work for you. Those are just some of the things that come to mind right now. Whew. Yes, that is that's a tall order. Or it can be because that piece around being considered the difficult black woman is very real. And it's very likely that it might happen. You might get labeled that. And to be able to be okay, number one, be okay with the label, but then also find ways to like circumvent it. I'm a recovering codependent person. So I've spent a lot of my time taking care of others and finding my value, like my own personal value in taking care of others. And so me asserting my boundaries has been a really difficult process because I've spent so much time wanting to be liked or doing things to be liked or to please others and to be like, actually, no, because that doesn't feel good for me. It feels really empowering, like feel really badass. And at the same time, it's like, not everybody's ready for it. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) <laughs> it's a process for sure because it's been so much conditioning around putting other people before us I know for myself and a lot of the women I work with and talk with like that's that piece right alone is, mm-hmm. you know it's, it's a lot of deep work to really see yourself as honorable to see yourself as worthy to see yourself as something someone you can prioritize so that you can have the energy have the mindset have the well, to really give from a place of overflow than mm-hmm. the patient and, and not really care about what people think outside of you. And it is a journey and a process, okay? <laughs> I have not arrived or anything like that. Mm-hmm. I've gotten to levels of it where maybe I'm able to come back to myself a little quicker than I could before, you know, mm-hmm. but I still struggle with things, but I don't stay in that energy too long. It's like, well, mm-mm, let's come back. Let's reclaim who we are and the truth of who we are. But I allow myself to feel and to know, to process whatever's happening and before me and then choose me again. So. Mm. <laughs> Whew. 
Well, I think when um, thinking about the boundaries piece and how you, it's really cool how you make sure that you disconnect in a way at lunchtime mm-hmm. where you're turning everything off. And, and I've gone through ups and downs with that. I don't know if you know of Microsoft Teams. Have you mm. heard of that? It's like kind of this online office. So it's okay. like you get a lot of pings throughout uh-huh. the day. And I just started turning the pings. I just started turning the notifications. I'm like, nah. Yes. It's too much. This is not, first of all, I can't focus. I've been doing that. I don't know if I've gone as far as now uh, closing my computer mm-hmm. at lunch. And so I need to try that now. Boundaries is also having boundaries with yourself, right? Because you got to enforce boundaries with your, not just with others, but like, hey, it's time for you to to tap yeah. in with yourself. Oh, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. And so I guess what could you walk us through a practice, you know, that that we could try um, the next on our next work day to help us re- re-energize ourselves? Yes, definitely. Before I go into that practice, I just wanted to add to what you just mentioned, too, just in terms of like the shedding off and the unplugging. I've also done turning off the group chats and, you know, so that I'm not getting a lot of the buzzing Mm -hmm. or turning it off of my phone, like not having my work emails go to my phone like I used Mm -hmm. to so that I'm not reminded when I'm not on that time. Mm-hmm. Of, of work and and just really that's been helpful just just as simple as that it's like when I clock in this is the time I'm giving to it and outside of that this is my time because I have a life outside of this this work and it can't be all about the energy uh being pulled away from the day job so just wanted to add those other two um things that I've done how has that been perceived you you creating those time boundaries and sticking to adhering to it i'm just curious (laughs) (laughs) well you know i haven't had conversations with folks to see hey what do y'all think about this but that's the other thing when you say boundaries with yourself sometimes i'm i make up in my head too what they might be thinking Mm. i kind of stir up in that so I know that I'm usually the last person to look into the group chats, right? They go on all day with it and sometimes after hours. So I'm getting there late and it looks like for me, it's like, oh, well, Nakia not really participating or she not really, she doesn't care about these things that are happening. Mm. And so these are thoughts that I'm making up in my head, which could be true or not, but no one's come back to say, say to me, but I've, I've also said to them too, like I get anxiety around the buzzing and the, the notifications and mm-hmm. it, so it doesn't work for me. So I've turned them off. So it's interesting. So I have to do the dance between that because yeah, there are moments where I'm criticizing. I don't know their truth, but I'm making their truth up in my head and then it's bothering me sometimes. Mm. But most of the time I'm like, well, it's honoring me and <laughs> I'm not willing to bend for Everybody else is doing and um or put myself in a position i'm also an introvert <laughs> and so and there's thank this you gosh patient that everybody gotta be out front leading and just you know jumping into uh, processing in a moment and i'm like i need a moment to think about this before i can respond so it could look like mickey is not participating mm. you no know, i need you to give me some clarity some context so that I can sit with this and in my own thoughts around it and reflect, and then I'll come back with something. So that's the other thing is dealing with like, people don't honor like your own individual way of being. Mm-hmm. Not everybody is an extrovert or, or should be expected to show up in the same way. And so then it looks like another coworker may be doing, getting all the shine, whatever, because they speak more when in, in reality, it's just, we're different. That's another thing. Dang. Woo. That's Reach. another thing, girl. <laughs> <laughs> In this tech-driven world, right? Yeah. It's a whole, yeah, that's a whole thing. Um, all the, the, the expectation to always be on. And if mm-hmm. you're not on, why weren't you on? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so how do we heal from that? What's <laughs> <laughs> Girl, <laughs> daily practice. 
practice, daily practice, as many daily practices as you can have. Um, but I can definitely share just one or two practices that I've been doing just to help me recenter and reset mm-hmm. um, on a daily basis. Now that we're in quarantine and just you know, managing, just even having to sit at a computer space or one space in my apartment has become everything to maintain my mental health well-being in addition to all of what I'm dealing with with the, the workplace overwhelm. One thing that I have done or am doing on a daily basis is oftentimes I'm in meetings that are very long and tedious and overwhelming. And again, going back to me being an introvert, a lot of times everybody wants to just kind of talk through things in a moment and like the meetings go way over, way past. And by the time you. Done, I am like zapped out my energy is gone and then they want you to go and work I'm shutting this computer down and I'm going to take a walk and so I've been doing these daily walks in nature where I take I have a specific playlist that is a self-love playlist with certain songs on it that feed my mind and my Mm. brain um, and make me feel good and so I listen to those songs and while I'm walking I look closely at nature, at the flowers, at the bees, at the trees, or just whatever, wherever you can find nature sprouting up. And I just kind of walk in an energy and an intention of gratitude, mm. so, you know, speaking what I'm grateful for. Um, even though this, this job is stressful or whatever, these things are happening, what am I grateful for mm-hmm. right now? Whether it's within the job or what I'm looking at in that moment or other pieces of my life, just bringing it back to a state of gratitude and appreciation of that I'm here. I'm still here. I'm breathing. There's more to life than this situation or circumstance. And then and I do that for about 10, 15 minutes. And I, you know, walk mm-hmm. around the block. And I come back and when I come back into my space, I have a reset and I am recharged and I am refreshed and I'm ready for moving forward. But yeah, that's one thing I've been doing among many things I've been doing (laughs) to recharge my energy and just have a daily practice uh, to honor myself and pour back into my cup. Wow. I love how many modalities are being used in that one 10 to 15 minute practice. You got the music, you got the positive affirmations, healing in nature, exercise. (laughs) You got all that going on. And so it's just really flipping the narrative. Oh, well, it's going to take too much time to do this, that, and the third. And it's like, actually, Look at how productive it, it, that's so that's the interesting part is that when you're recharged, you're actually more productive. But like they got us we're running ourselves ragged for some reason. Mm-hmm. I don't understand. It's not beneficial to anyone. It's not at all. And I'm like, I'm not here for that. <laughs> you're not going to fry me. Uh-uh. So, <laughs> I am not doing it. But you're right. And, and I hear a lot of times with women. I work with and speak with, like, the first thing we'll say is, I don't have time. Mm. I don't have time for that. You don't got time for you. You don't got 10 minutes to give yourself just that and honor your 10 minutes, even if it's just that. We got 24 hours in a day. You can at least give yourself 10 minutes to unplug and to recharge. We got to shift that mindset around and you can, it's powerful. It's so powerful just how little of time it would take but how much you would gain from that i'll share this story really quickly that's since it's coming up for me right now the other thing i like to do is drive to the marina after work so mm. you know, I, I unplug and go recharge and look at the water and i was standing at the water the other day just mesmerized by the waves thrashing up against the rocks and I was just really looking at the surface of it and it was beautiful. And I just was in silent and silence listening to, to the spirit. And um, I received these powerful affirmations. It came through, through me in the moment. And this all happened within five to 10 minutes. And one of those affirmations was I expect the overflow of abundance. Mm. And the other one was I place myself in situations where I have access to the abundance that's already mine. Something mm. like that. 
and I was looking at the waves and I noticed I was too concentrated on the, the, the thrashing of the ones that were closest to me. And I started looking far off into, you know, as far as I can look where I couldn't really see the waves, but I can see, I knew how far it went. And what came to me was, I can expect that those waves that are way down there are going to eventually come to where I am. Mm. They're going to, I can expect it even if I can't see it fully. And, and so this was uh, just a powerful, I'm still kind of milking it and, and processing it, but just this idea around expecting beyond what you can see and mm. not just focusing on what's in front of you and looking far beyond and knowing that you are abundant and connected to that same energy. So I share that story and to relate it back to this is that happened all of under over the course of five to 10 minutes mm. of me just standing still at the ocean and, and being quiet enough to hear a message that was for me in nature teaching me in that moment. So once I came back home, oh, I was ready. Okay, I was ready to like work on my business and and move forward and completely let go of the day that I had earlier uh, with the, the 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 day job. You know, so mm-hmm. little practices we may not think that they make a difference, but taking five to ten minutes of your time, you know, that's your time. Unplugging, shifting mm-hmm. your attention, and putting your attention on a different intention and really just being present with that. Like it doesn't have to take forever. It doesn't have to be some big thing. Just having those daily moments, honor yourself. And the more you do it, then you you will open up the door to crack open honoring yourself on a regular basis. So it's a process. Wow. Well, another way is possible and it's on the way and it's going to take us being courageous and Also, just valuing ourselves and saying that we're worthy, we are worthy. And and that in itself is is work. You know, that could be a lot of work in unpacking. And so just really grateful for folks like you, Nakia, doing this work and teaching and just using your gifts to empower and help others. It's super admirable and and the way the many multifaceted ways that shows up, whether it's through your art and your jewelry or through your coaching or through your youth work or through your hairstyling, the possibilities are abundant, I will say. Yeah. And so just wanted to check in, like, how can folks they're interested to work with you? Um, how are ways that we can contact you? Yes, thank you. I love that concept around just using our gifts. I'll just say that's something I'm very passionate about supporting women and not only honoring ourselves, but also leaping into your divine calling with ways to use your gifts and answer what it is that's yours to do. And we, we need to have a foundation of honoring ourselves and taking care of ourselves while simultaneously doing the thing that we love. And so, yeah, I love that. And I've been an example of that. And I, and it wasn't always my goal to teach it. It was just like, Okay, you got this, you give it. Mm-hmm. You it. It's your responsibility. You know what your gifts are. Who are we not to bring those gifts forward? Mm. And I'm not saying it's easy to say yes to your calling, but that's why if we, you know, you're here for a reason. You're not here just to be in the grind culture. You're not here just to work and be in this. Okay, I can go on and on, but um, mm. <laughs> that's the work I am doing with women, definitely getting clarity around their next leaps and their journeys and taking care of themselves in the process. And so you can find me on IG at Magnetic Woman Coach. And also I will say goddesscrowns.com for now. You can also find me there, but the most current is Magnetic Woman Coach on IG. When you click the link in my bio, there's so many tools there. There's an assessment called Are You Honoring Yourself or Committed to Overwhelm, where you can just do a self-check and really do a score around where you are with taking on too much and then leading that to how do you break free from that. And so I'm, I'm going to be doing a lot of work around that specifically, but you can be updated on IG, Magnetic Woman Coach on Instagram. So. Yes, yes. 
Well, thank you so much, Nakia. Definitely I'm walking away with some fresh perspectives on some things. And I know that folks listening and watching this are as well. And for folks who are finding value in this, definitely feel free to subscribe to our Patreon. The link is in the bio to support the sustainability of this content creation. And also, if you haven't already, you can also follow me on Instagram at thriving underscore with underscore Heather. Until next time, Nakia. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye.